This video is brought to you by Skillshare. The live action Transformers film franchise is no stranger when it comes to inconsistencies. With each entry we're hit with contradiction after contradiction and to be quite frank I think it's because the big wigs over at Paramount didn't expect these turn your brain off popcorn flicks to generate billions of dollars. I mean eventually the well of money did go dry by the fifth installment but by the time it did we had a massive cesspool of inconsistencies and that inconsistent cesspool came in the form of Energon. Over the years we've seen this Cybertronian Kool-Aid take on various colors with little to no explanations given, causing many fans who want to delve a little deeper beyond the mindless explosions to be confused. And to be fair, the concept of Energon has undergone some serious redefinition and reimagination as the Transformers fiction has trundled along for the past 20 plus years, way before the films were even a thing. If you're familiar with this substance then you know that it is the primary energy source of the Transformers. Beyond that it's been shown to be many other things such as food, alcoholic beverages and even currency. It also serves as the default power source for the machines and weapons the Transformers build. When the substance was first introduced in the G1 continuity it was a purple liquid substance developed by the Decepticons and stored in cubes. But by the time Transformers Prime rolled around it became a cross between the Generation 1 depiction and the Beast Wars depiction, making the Energon crystals, Energon cubes and Liquid Energon which were all blue instead of purple. And one of the reasons behind this color change was that the showrunners wanted to make the mainline form of Energon easy to distinguish from the Dark Energon. Another reason why is because they wanted to make the creator god Primus the original source from which the blue Energon came, while his evil twin brother Unicron would serve as the catalyst for the purple Dark Energon. But in the Bayverse it's mostly seen as the form of blood that spews out of the Cybertronians as they sustain injuries. In Revenge of the Fallen, Jetfire explained that Energon is the lifeblood of all the Transformers. He was living proof of the fact that without regular compensation of Energon of any kind, a Transformers body and mind began to slowly break down, rusting away and becoming senile in the process. Even though the Allspark was said to be an Energon generator, we only saw it used on a Decepticon which was Megatron and miscellaneous human technology. Following the cube's destruction and the defeat of the Decepticons, the Autobots allied themselves with the humans and since they didn't have time to confirm the presence of true Energon on Earth, instead began stockpiling manufactured Energon at Ness. When questioned about the substance by Robert Epps, Ironhide explained that it was basically useless to humanity. They could not use it to power weapons the way the Transformers did like Optimus Prime's dual Energon swords, because its chemical composition was far beyond their ability to master. And this is a pretty interesting concept that made me think back to the synthetic Energon from Transformers Prime, which I'm going to elaborate on later in this video. At first there seemed to be two different types of Energon, one of which was never really specified to be even Energon in the first place, but after the first three movies there was another form of it. Energon flows inside Transformers bodies in a liquid form through a structure akin to a human circulatory system. Glowing blue Energon showered from the wounds sustained by several Transformers during the Battle of Mission City and was usually seen when a Transformer spine is ripped, like in one case where Jazz was ripped in two by Megatron. You want a piece of me? You want a piece? No! I want two! Another major instance would have to be when Scorpinox tore through Jetfire's torso, and you also see small splashes of it when Ratchet gets his spark ripped out of his chest by lockdown. With that said, there have been other liquids or lubricants that kinda contradict the whole blue Energon debacle. Something that I have yet to see anyone else talk about is this golden Energon that oozed out of the Fallen's mouth when Optimus punched a hole in his chest and destroyed his spark. In fact, quite a lot of differently colored fluids were seen splooshing and squirting from Transformers during the quest for Matrix of Leadership and the battles over Sentinel Prime Space Bridge, including a disturbingly blood like red liquid, but whether or not any of these were Energon is unclear. Many have observed that this quote unquote red Energon may not even be Energon at all, insisting that it could have been coolant from the vehicle's parts that Cybertronians chose for their alt mode. Apparently this color would appear if they sustained a severe injury to the head. While it was very prominent in Transformers Dark of the Moon, the first time I noticed it was in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. During that epic battle in the forest there was a 3 on 1 fight between Megatron Starscream Grindor against Robo Jesus himself Optimus Prime. Even though there was a huge disadvantage, Optimus was still able to deal out some blows to his Decepticon ops. That's until they got the drop on my boy. After Grindor and Starscream get in their shots, Megatron follows it up with a brutal kick to Optimus's face, shattering his faceplate. Besides the sparks and pieces of metal, you see this red liquid coming from his mouth. And shortly after he rips off Grindor's head, you see that same red liquid spewing from his wound. Fast forward to Transformers Dark of the Moon and we see this substance a lot. And after looking at this film again, I think it's safe to assume that this red fluid is just coolant or the Cybertronian 
an equivalent of saliva or mucus because we see it dripping out of the dreads mouths as if they're salivating and as seen in many instances it mainly comes out of the mouth or a part of the throat when they're decapitated so yeah that's got to be the cybertronian equivalent of saliva so let's go ahead and do a recap of all the different energon we've gone over so far we have the standard blue energon which is mainly seen when the spine is ripped we got a brief glimpse at what looks to be golden energon from the fallen and what i'm assuming to be the blood of the original prime dynasty and we have the red energon which is basically the saliva that comes from the cybertronians when they get the spit knocked out of them so there's that when you look at these different substances it somewhat clears up the confusion that fans have with the different colors but there's still one more liquid element we have yet to discuss and if you read by the title then you know that we got to talk about the green energon and this is the energon that brings those inconsistency back into play we've already explained that the blue energon was the lifeblood of transformers so when and where did it change to green well firstly this particular form of energon would make its first on screen appearance in transformers age of extinction and become a mainstay all the way up to transformers the last night and i know many would have you believe it first was seen in transformers dark of the moon when ironhide was leaking this greenest liquid from his mouth shortly before he died but i think that was the result of the cosmic rust causing the blue energon to change color and we also have greenish looking liquids coming from the decepticon beast mouths and i think it's because they are cybertronian beasts and animals so their salivary glands are going to be a little different from the typical biped Cybertronians, so yeah. Anyways, I looked around on certain TF Wikia sites and they didn't really provide much info on what this green energon was. And it's probably due to the fact that the Bay films threw so many things at us that it became nearly impossible to make sense of it all. Not to mention that we didn't really have any other canonical source material to go off of since Michael Bay had forced IDW to discontinue the movie tie-in comics after TF3 since they spoiled certain plot elements before the movie hit theaters. So if you're wondering why I haven't made any Transformers videos for characters like Lockdown or Grimlock, it's because there weren't any tie-in comics for Age of Extinction and The Last Night. Anyways, according to Transformers.Phantom.com, the green energon usually appeared when a Transformer sustained a severe injury such as getting a part of their head blown off. But the first time I saw this green ooze on screen was when Shane accidentally shoots one of Lockdown's minions. I initially thought that they only bled green because they were some kind of drones and they had that black and green color scheme going. But there were a lot of things in Lockdown's ship that had this green type of blood, such as the spider-like alien that Hound killed. Nonetheless, Bay and the effects team were very adamant about making this green energon a primary form of blood for the other robots in the film. Later on, we see Grimlock spit it out when he's punched by Optimus, and KSI's robot prototypes bled out that green liquid when they were injured. Fast forward to Transformers The Last Night, and we see that same liquid coming out of a wounded Talisman Knight and split out of Megatron after he was shot in the shoulder by Edmund Burton, and when his arm was cut off by Optimus in Quintessa's chambers. When I went back to watch these films, I came up with a plausible theory on why this change was happening, and that is that the green energon came from the creators. While their origins are unknown, one of the biggest parts of their legacy came from the seed, which was a device made by the creators and contains elemental transformium that is the primary material of transformers. It functions by being primed then detonating, turning all organic matter around it into molten metal. Eventually human scientists discovered it but were unaware of its true nature. This change following the encounter with the Transformers where the scientific applications were uncovered. After the Battle of Chicago, Kinetic Solutions Incorporated, aka KSI, were forced to mine Transformium either from the deposits on their world or from dead Transformers. Now, as I mentioned, we had characters like Grimlock who bled the green energon, and given the fact that he and his dino companions had dinosaur beast modes, chances are they were constructed after the creators came to Earth at the end of the age of the dinosaurs to cyberform it with the seed. Fast forward millions of years later, and we have the humans, aka KSI, creating green energon infused transformers from that very same substance that the creators use. Another theory I have is when a Cybertronian who's going through a complete makeover or is reborn like Megatron was in Age of Extinction in the last night, they tend to carry the green energon within them. As I mentioned earlier, in most lores, particularly the Align continuity, the blue energon was closely associated with Primus, the father of all Cybertronians, and the character does exist within the live action continuity since he's been mentioned in the expanded lore such as the tie-in comics. We've seen Sentinel Prime mention to Optimus that he was a direct descendant of Primus. It has also been mentioned that the Allspark gave life to Primus after it crash landed on Cybertron. So it's safe to assume that the blue energon is indeed the true energon, which leads me to believe that the green 
green energon is nothing more than a synthetic energon or fake one. We've already stated that the Autobots were able to power their weapons making their own energon, and I wouldn't be surprised if KSI discovered how to do this to power their drones after the big battle of Chicago. I also gotta point out that Izzy was seen using that very same synthetic energon in jars she used to confuse the TRF robots into firing on each other. Now you're probably asking yourself, what about the Guardian Knights from Transformers The Last Night? They also featured this green energon which would lead many to believe that it had to be real deal energon, right? Well, if you think about it, they were created by Quintessa, whom they refer to as the Great Deceiver, so it's not too far of a stretch to believe that she made them using the synthetic energon. I mean, she had already granted Megatron a new nightly body that also possessed that same kind of energon. In conclusion, if a Cybertronian didn't possess blue energon and instead possessed the green energon, they were either A, not created from Primus, or they were B, remade into an entirely different Cybertronian like Megatron was when he served on the Quintessa. Also, as a side note, I want to point out that certain Transformers may have been surviving off of synthetic energon during their later years on Earth, because we do see it leaking from Optimus when Cade finds him broken down in Age of Extinction, and there's a chance that Canopy was using it too since we see that synthetic energon leaking from his face and mouth. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Izzy was giving him refills since she had a hefty supply of it in containers. I mean, the real Energon had become quite scarce after the cube was destroyed, so this could explain why we saw characters who had once bled blue Energon now bleeding green. Anyways, I know this video was a little all over the place, which in all honesty is due to me trying to make sense of all the contradictions the Bay films have made, and to be fair, it's hard finding a way to explain things to people without leaving certain points out. That's why I'm thankful we have Skillshare. It's an online community dedicated to making sure you never miss out on any info regarding things you're interested in. We're talking thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like yourself when you want to explore new skills and deepen your existing passions and get lost in creativity. One of their classes that I found best suits me is to stand out in YouTube build a successful channel taught by popular YouTuber Jazza. This guy has literally cracked the code and made me see things in a different light than I had before. From setting your channel up to success to getting the best out of your YouTube AdSense. And his classes are curated specifically for learning, meaning that you don't have to wait through ads. And they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And guess what, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So join the millions including me already learning on Skillshare today. All you gotta do is click the link in the description and the first 1000 of my subscribers to click on it will get a free trial of premium memberships so you can explore your creativity. You can start today by going to skl.sh slash randomblackgamer12201. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown slash theory on green synthetic energon. I know you guys are going to probably point out that someone else has already did a video on this and claim that theirs is a fact, but there is no real definitive answer on what this stuff is. It hasn't been explained by Bay or the story writers, and until it's been explained by the officials, everything you've heard from anyone including myself is just a theory. So yeah. Anyways, let me know what you think about my theory. Do you think it lessens the confusion, or did you think I just made matters worse? If you made it to this point of the video, I ask that you follow your comment up with hashtag sent in. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed this video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.